here's the deal. Uh, started started with drum workshop as a teaching studio. This is this is the 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 document we got from uh, the application seller's permit on April 21st, 1972. Wow. Uh, and that started the teaching studio. And then studying with Freddie sp particularly, um, it was really important when you were practicing your bass drum technique to sit on a solid foundation uh, and seat. And the best seat in the days was Roger's seat. It was still a little bit wobbly, but the Ludwig and the Slingerlands were really wobbly. It was just one screw. Just one screw it? that kind of held it up. So the solid trap case throne is what all the pro players used. Buddy used it. Ed Shaughnessy used it. Uh, Joe Morello. I mean, it was that. It was a solid one solid cylinder that had a seat on top of it, uh, and they were made custom to those guys to whatever height they wanted because they were the you know the top artists in all these companies. So we'll make you whatever you want. For Joe Blow, who's walking into a drum shop, he had to uh, only get one that was 24 inches high because that's the only height that they made him for the drum shop. So the obvious solution to me was making a seat that adjusted up and down. And so I had the idea of doing that and was struggling to make a few of them to see how it would work out. So, And, and I had given them to a few friends and they had liked them. And I thought Johnny I would, Hernandez. John Hernandez took one. Nick Ciroli took one. Mm -hmm. That was one of the ads that we put in the, one of the first Modern Drummers. But before Modern Drummer, this was even before Modern Drummer. It was a musicians' union paper mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. that we advertised in. That's right. So it's, when John said, "What do we do next?" I thought, "Look, I've got like such a full schedule. Now I'm getting people who want this invention idea of this adjustable trap case seat. Why don't you make the seats?" And that was the beginning of what we started. And I think the first ad we did was this one in April 1974. The I, Royal Throne. <laughs> I called oh, it, my God. I called it the Royal Throne. So I put my marketing hat on, and I thought, I need a name that would be you know, resonant with somebody so that they would always have some connection with it. So kings sit on royal thrones, right? So, <laughs> so but, does a queen. But, Back, <laughs> back in the day, it was also somewhat referred to as the toilet was royal. Yeah, throne. right. So I showed that it. Wasn't to, good. I showed it to Freddie Gruber, and he immediately said, "You cannot call it the royal throne. We have to change the name of this." So I got a little more long-winded to talk about what it actually did, and then we did the ad. Here it is: the adjustable, comfortable trap case seat, and that's what you started making, uh, and put an ad in the Musicians Union paper. Uh, for $75. And you laid it out. I laid it out, and everything was done that, you know, you cut it out with the scissors, and you mm -hmm. lay it in, and you tape it up, and uh, none, of the, none of the technology that came about, you know, shortly after that. But I, I was getting checks for $75 from people in New York, people in Chicago. And a lot which, of them. And it, it was a lot for us in the day, for sure. I mean, it oh, was, yeah. it, to make two or three of these a week was, was challenging. Uh, and I just thought at that point, they don't know me at all. They're sending me a check for 75 bucks. They don't know if they're, they're just, they, they've never seen it. They just saw a little ad for it, but they think it's a great idea. So that was a huge part when we grew through the years and got into Campco, and we'll talk about how that happened in a minute, uh, of giving me the confidence that if you make something that fills a need or a void for a drummer, even if you don't have a name, we're selling to our own community. My friends liked it, your friends liked it. Why wouldn't a guy in Oshkosh, Iowa like it if he's a drummer? You know, it's, it's a good idea and it solved a problem for them. So we got into the first business together of making trap case seats. And that's what I made. That's, that's what you made. And you, we were, if I recall, we had uh, Freddie Gruber over. Yeah. But he says, you know, what are you guys doing? And I said, well, and I was like sitting in there and I was listening to Don talk with him. He goes, I just don't get it. I mean, I, I all right, a seat. Beautiful. Well, the seat actually got us in a couple doors. No, no question it got us in a couple doors. And it also brings up the subject of, I, I wanted to make it, as, as we did with every product, we went overboard. I mean, you know, not, not that we over-engineered it, but we, we perfected it to the point to where we wanted it to work for everyone. Uh, True. Even though some things might only be applicable, applicable to the pro drummer out there. But as a working drummer in clubs, 
that kind of answered the question, how did we know the end user? How did we know what drummers wanted out there? Well, I was one of them. My friends were, you know, I had great friends. Living in L.A., you got to know the best drummers in the world, Shelly Mann, Ed Shaughnessy. These, these people became friends, along with my friends, who I grew up with at that point in time. So I knew if you were in a club and you needed to find a cymbal felt, it's dark, you needed a flashlight. So we added a flashlight. We added a stick bag that went along with it. We had all kinds of accessories that went along with this. I, this is way before we started making pedals or doing anything with Campco, by the way. And I had one last idea, and this is the only thing that John, in our entire history of 50 <laughs> years, ever refused to do when I asked him to do something. He would, you know, that, that's part of the secret of our success, I think, is the huge amount of respect we have for each other in our, in our, in our opinions. We may disagree on some things, and then we move forward. But at one point, I said... <laughs> I need you to sew I need, these things. We, I, we, need a, we need a case that slips over this. So if I put it in my car, I don't ding up the, you know, the, the Tolex on the actual seat. I said, so I'm going to get a sewing machine. And you said? I don't sew. Sorry. <laughs> Drawing a line right there. That was the end of it. So uh, <laughs> I went to uh, Deanna at that time. Deanna did it, right? Deanna, and I said, I need some, some who was 13 years old, uh, and I said, I need some of these sewn. So who that, was with us to this day. Who was with us to this day, right, in, in accounting. And talking about some big things that happened to us back in the day, got a letter from Manny's. We sent them, who was a major music store in New York, by the way. They were, they 48th were, Street. They, were the, they were the big guns. Uh, we sent him one seat. He said he went on vacation. He came back. The seat was sold. I would also like to know what the price is of the new seat with the covers, as we told him about a cover, which John wasn't going to make for us. Uh, and he said, I'll take five more. And that was the beginning of us kind of getting into stores, along with Guitar Center, where I walked into Guitar Center here in Los Angeles with one seat. Who is this guy walking in to talk to the guy in the drum department? Hey, I got an idea. I got an adjustable trap case seat. I'm Don Lombardi. have a, you know, a little teaching studio. Um, and as I was showing it to the head of the drum department at Guitar Center, which was across the street from where it is now, uh, the owner of Guitar Center, Wayne, I believe was his name. Wayne Mitchell. Wayne Mitchell. This guy comes out with cowboy boots on and says, what do you got there? I said, well, you know, they make these at only one height. I've got one that's a good idea. Let's take one of those and try it out. Then we hit gold because Beckman Musical Instruments was a Tom distribution Beckman. company in town with Tom Beckman. How we ended up purchasing Campco is part of this story, but Beckman Musical Instruments, I knew him because I was teaching his son. Uh, he was coming in and he was one of my weekly students. He placed an order for 100 seats at $40 each, uh, and that's an order that we have yet to fill today. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we felt we like throwing money in the air like, We've hit it. We've, We've done it. We actually closed up that day, I think, and went out and celebrated, celebrated that yeah. we, we had we had a big order with a with an, a real drum company. We went and had tacos. Yep. And then there's another whole taco story. <laughs> and then uh, the the opportunity came up where Tom Beckman walked in one day and said, "I'm going to sell my distribution business, Beckman, Beckman Musical Instruments." I have Campco, which is a small drum company that I own. I'm going to sell the name to Hoshino Tama. Are you interested in buying the tooling dies and molds? Mm -hmm.